Go back to work. Where you come from, lady? you all think you... Hey, tell them to go back where they belong. Just because you come from another country, it'll make you nobody. You nobody. As far as I'm concerned, probably on welfare, we probably, the taxpayers probably paid for all that stuff. University of Florida, when he spotted his chance to confront someone who hates his very existence, he just had one question. Why the fuck you don't like me? But Randy Furness, a neo-Nazi skinhead, didn't have an answer. Instead, he stared. I could have hit him. I could have hurt him, Courtney told the New York Daily News. But something in me said, you know what? He just needs love. That's when Courtney, taking his father's teaching as a bishop at heart, offered Furness a hug. And finally, he got an answer. I don't know. Here in Columbia, South Carolina, the man yelling, walk away, is Jonathan Petland. He is 42 years old and a U.S. Army sergeant. I didn't do anything to you. I'm about to do something to you. You better start walking. The black teenager named DeAndre lives nearby and says he was out for a walk. You're in the wrong neighborhood, motherfucker. Get out. Through Luckily, the community had their neighbors' as backs. Organized by the youth of Montclair, these students banded together, all wearing masks, and marched to Susan's house, protesting her racism. The pictures that you are about to see are powerful, and the message remains strong. Hey, hey, ho, ho, your racist self has got to go. And guess what Susan did? So, yep, she called the <laughs> oh, this is being recorded, all right. That is former U.S. Army Drill Sergeant John Miles. He is drunk and clerks at the South Carolina grocery store are refusing to sell him and his girlfriend more alcohol. Black Lives Matter is the most racist fucking thing we've ever fucking seen. They all cashed their check. The only black employee I had was not able to cash his check. That's what I am made history when the new chief of staff, General Charles Brown, was confirmed. Brown is the first African-American to become the chief of a military service. Nick Schifrin has the story. Nomination, General Charles Q. Brown, Jr., to be chief of staff and general of the United States Air Force. For the Under first the time in the Republic's 244-year history, the Senate confirmed a black officer, General Charles Brown, as a military service chief. And thinking about a history of, of racial issues in my own experiences that didn't always sing of liberty and equality. Last week, Brown posted an emotional video about what he was thinking about, racism in the military. I'm thinking about the pressure I felt to perform error-free, especially for supervisors I perceived had expected less from me as an African-American. I'm thinking about wearing the same flight suit with the same wings on my chest as my peers and then being questioned by another military member are you a pilot? I'm thinking about my mentors and how I, rarely I had a mentor that looked like me. You may have heard that some people down in the prep school wrote some racial slurs on some message boards. If you haven't heard that, I wanted you to hear it from me. If you're outraged by those words, then you're in the right place. That kind of behavior has no place at the prep school, it has no place at USAFA, and it has no place in the United States Air Force. You should be outraged not only as an airman, but as a human being. And I'll tell you that the appropriate response for horrible language and horrible ideas, the appropriate response is a better idea. So that's why I'm here. That's why all these people are up here on the staff tower. So let me have everybody who's up here, please pull forward to the rails. Also, there are so many people here, they're lining the outsides along the windows. These are members of the faculty, coaching staff, AOCs, AMTs, from the airfield, from my staff, from my headquarters. All aspects of the 10th Air Base Wing, all aspects that make up USAFA, and the United States Air Force Academy. Leadership is here. You heard from Brigadier General Goodwin. Brigadier General Armacost is here. Colonel Block from the Athletic Department is here. Mr. Knowlton is in Washington, D.C. right now. That's why they're here. That's why we're all here, because we have a better idea. 
Some of you may think that that happened down in the prep school and doesn't apply to us. I would be naive, and we would all be naive to think that everything is perfect here. We would be naive to think that we shouldn't discuss this topic. We would also be tone deaf not to think about the backdrop of what's going on in our country. Things like Charlottesville and Ferguson, the protests in the NFL. That's why we have a better idea. One of those ideas, the dean brought people together to discuss Charlottesville. Because what we should have is a civil discourse and talk about these issues. That's a better idea. We received outstanding feedback from that session at Charlottesville. But I also have a better idea, and it's about our diversity. And it's the power of the diversity, the power of the 4,000 of you, and all of the people that are on the staff tower and lining the glass, the power of us as a diverse group. The power that we come from all walks of life, that we come from all parts of this country, that we come from all races, we come from all backgrounds, gender, all makeup, all upbringing. The power of that diversity comes together and makes us that much more powerful. That's a much better idea than small thinking and horrible ideas. We have an opportunity here 5,500 people in this room to think about what we are as an institution. This is our institution and no one can take away our values. No one can write on a board and question our values. No one can take that away from us. So just in case you're unclear on where I stand on this topic, I want to leave you with my most important thought today. If you can't treat someone with dignity and respect, then you need to get out. If you can't treat someone from another gender, whether that's a man or a woman, with dignity and respect, then you need to get out. If you demean someone in any way, then you need to get out. And if you can't treat someone from another race or a different color skin with dignity and respect, then you need to get out. 